Hello you startlingly beautiful people. How are you? Today I'm talking to you about the FU syndrome. A little bit of advice. Tell you all about it on the other side. So what is the FU syndrome? Well, it's a syndrome that you and I share. Everybody shares it. And what it is is this. You know, we've talked about the push thing. You know, if you push somebody, they'll push back. The FU syndrome is very like that. If you go to somebody and you say to them, make me a cup of coffee, okay? Even if you're talking to a yellow, you know, the colors, the personality colors, the yellows are the ones who, who like to help everybody. They're just here to help. Even a yellow, the very first thing that goes to the mind is, F you, make it yourself, okay? But then they might go and make it. But the first reaction that we get inside is a pushback one of, make it yourself. So that's the very first reaction that we have. Whether we act on it or not, it's like the, no way man, F you. F you, right? So I'm sharing this with you because it's a way that we can use. It's very windy outside, okay? The, the, the door's making a noise because it's windy, if you're wondering. When you want somebody to do something for you, then there's a system that you can use. And it's a really simple system. And once you know it, you can increase the possibility of that person doing that for you by, uh, let's say, threefold or more. Okay, what is that system? Well, they did this, um, like a, a little test in a place where there was a photocopier. And they did it in various offices. And there's always like this little queue of people waiting for the photocopier. I don't know if you've ever been in that situation. I have. You're waiting for the photocopier and you've got yours. And what they would have is they would have somebody that would go up and they would go to the person at the front of the queue and they would say, can I go first? Okay. And what they found was that two out of 10 people said yes, but eight out of 10 said no, F you, <laughs> the F you syndrome. Why? Because, you know, because there's no, they just, who, who are you? Who are you to, to want to jump in front? Okay. Then they had the same person do the same thing, except they would go to the front of the queue and they would say, could I go first? Because I've only got two copies and I'm in a terrible hurry. Okay. And eight out of 10 people said yes. So exactly the opposite way around. Two people said no. Right, okay, and there's always a couple of people who, you know, how dare you, how very dare you. But eight out of 10 people said yes. What was the difference? What did they do? The difference was the word because. It wasn't, I'm in a hurry and I've only got two copies. It wasn't that. It was the word because. How did they know it was the word because? Because they changed the reason. Okay, they changed the, the, the reason after the because. And what they found was no matter what the reason was, even some outlandish reasons, like, you know, because um, uh, I want to go home early today. All right. People still said yes. Even if it was like, oh, that's not a really good reason. What they found was this. People need to understand why. If you give them a because, they will accept that much more than if you don't, if you just ask them. If you watch all of the propaganda, all of the horrible, stark manipulation that we have suffered over the years, you will find that they will always give you a because. Always. They'll give it because they're going to ask you to do something and they'll say something like, because this is how we're going to keep everyone safe. And it, it really, and the, the, the key thing is, understand, 
it doesn't matter. It, it's meaningless what comes after the because. All we want to know is just, is there a reason why I've got to do this? We love to know the reason. Is there a reason? And even if the reason's shit, which it has been, you know, because it'll keep your granny alive. People go, yep, yeah, I'll do that then. No problem. Eight out of ten people. Eight out of ten people. Eight out of ten housewives said they like that. So how can we apply that to us? Now, you know, it was only recently that I said we can't wake anybody up. And we can't wake anybody up. But what we can do is we can use our language to help them. To help them at least have the opportunity of looking at information. Even if it's not the right time for them. Or it can give us a chance to be able to talk to them about something that they wouldn't normally talk about. How do we do it? Well, we use the because. And these are kind of little structures that we might be able to use. We can say something like this. Well, if you just go up to somebody and go, do you know what? All the politicians are a load of bollocks and they're all minging and I don't like them. Okay? And the, the person's going, what are you telling me this for? I don't want to hear that. Why, why are you off? Can you, what are you telling me this for? Why are you telling me this? This is what goes through people's minds. So the way that you do it, whatever it is that you want to share, you can say, listen, I'm going to tell you this because I think it's really going to be valuable for you. Okay? Just because. And remember, the because can be any reason. If you want to add even more power to this, you can say, I don't know if this is true, but I'm going to tell you this because I think you might find it interesting. Okay? I don't know if this is true. Now, already you've softened it for them. It's softened. I don't know if it's true. Okay? So, the, the varying degrees, you've softened it, you've given them a reason, right? And the very powerful one is this. I don't know if this is really the case, but I'm going to tell you this because I love you. I'm going to tell you this because you're very important to me and I want you to be able to, to know this even if it's not the case. Right? So, you know, because I love you, whoa, now we're moving into the emotional blackmail, the everything like that. You know, I love you, they love me, I'll, I'll have to listen. Yeah? So there, there are ways of, of kind of manipulating the situation so the person at least eight out of ten people will at least listen to you okay and then of course the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow when you want to talk to somebody and you want them at least to give you a chance to say your thing okay then what you do is this you say virtually the same thing i don't know if this is true or not but I'm going to tell you because I think you love it. George down the road has just told me. That's it. That's it. If you want to catch somebody's attention, all you have to do is talk about a third person, third party. I don't know if it's true, but I'm going to tell you because you love it. I think you love it. Okay? Or, I mean, that's just pressing everybody's hot buttons. Oh, it's not your stuff. It's somebody else's. So I listen to that because I don't mind listening to what other people's opinions are. I just don't want to hear your stupid fucking opinion, which is what people think. Don't want to hear your opinion. I've heard it. It's stupid. But George down the road, come on, tell me all about it. Okay. And so you can, by using that third person, you can give people loads of information, loads of information. I use it all the time in my therapies. You know, a friend of mine once said, sometimes, and, and a lot of the times it's true, but sometimes it isn't. Sometimes I've got to manipulate that into that. A friend of mine once said, I remember a boss looking at me and saying, it doesn't matter. As long as it's somebody else, people are very happy to listen to that. And, and then it give them a because. And they'll be very happy to, to, to at least listen or to do something, you know. I really want you to do this for me because if you do, it's going to blah, blah, blah. People are, hey, okay, you know, there's a reason. 
So give those processes a go when you want to, you know, at least try and elicit somebody's help or get somebody to listen to you. And always remember my friend John, the my friend John process, which is this is not my information. And I don't even that that little disclaimer. I don't even know if it's true, but I'm going to tell you because I think it's important that you hear this. And anyway, it was John down the road. I don't know. All right, so that's how you use it. So I'll leave that with you. It's a little interesting tool to use in the future. I love you all. Bye-bye.